Hey everyone, this is a review of the Milwaukee Fuel Cordless 3-in-1 Backpack Vacuum. It's model number 0885-20 if you buy it bare tool, dash 21 HD if you buy it with a 9 amp hour battery kit. Milwaukee designed this vacuum to be pretty versatile. You can wear it on your back, you can hang it on a ladder uh, or on a 2x4 joist. Uh, you can set it on the ground and carry it by the top handle here. Uh, it's meant to be used for dust collection with tools as well as job site cleanup. All right, so let's go over the specifications, features this has, and see how hard it sucks in a good way. All right, to convert this back and forth between a backpack vacuum and a carry or hanging vacuum, there's a little lever here at the bottom. You just got to reach underneath the backpack straps and pinch, and then pull the bottom out and the top down and kind of swing it back. You've got posts right here that go in at the top and these little clips go in at the bottom and here's that squeeze lever I was talking about down here. To put it back on, you just do the opposite. You take these posts, make sure they're lined up and then push the whole thing up and towards the unit. This wasn't the most intuitive process the first time I used this, uh, but I've gotten the hang of it a little bit better since then. To hang this off of something like a ladder, tool cart, or a ceiling joist, you just pull this out and slide it over top of whatever it is. Uh, it's, it hangs pretty securely, and you've got a strap that can go around this to secure it uh, and keep it from falling off if it gets bumped. If you want to use this as just a regular vacuum that you're carrying around, it does have a top handle, although it's not quite above the center of gravity. So it kind of tilts in a little bit, which is annoying if you're trying to pick this up out of a tight clearance area. Uh, so I wish they had moved this handle a little bit forward. I know the motor's probably up here and it would probably get in the way, but it's just a little bit of a hassle that it's not right over the CG. Your on off switch is just a rocker switch right here. The center is off. If you hit it up, it's on high. If you hit it down, it's on low. Uh, this is really convenient for when it's on the backpack uh, configuration, but if you've got this up on a ladder or if you're hanging it off somewhere, it's down on the floor and it's not as convenient. The sound level on this thing is absolutely amazing. It's 76 decibels and that sounds, and that doesn't sound quiet, uh, but if I turn it on low, it's, it really surprised me. So that's as much as sound you're getting on low and then on high, it's a little bit louder. But really, most of the sound you're going to get is from suction noise. So if I actually put a crevice tool on this, you'll notice there's a lot more noise. And that's all pretty much just from the air traveling through this uh, rather than being motor noise uh, from the actual tool itself. Emptying out the canister is really easy. It's a clear plastic so you can see uh, when it's getting full and it's got just a little button on the back here. You got to push this in and the bottom drops out. Make sure you've got it over somewhere you want all the junk to go into uh, when you click that because it'll just pop everything in there. There's no bag. You just slide it right back in. One thing to note when you've got it out, uh, it is structural because if you look at this, this really wobbles around uh, if you torque on it when this canister isn't in there. It's pretty sturdy with the canister in there, but just be careful not to drop this or anything because it's not the sturdiest when you don't have the canister in it. To change out the filter or clean out the filter, uh, just take this little piece off right here. It's got a rubber gasket around it and it just presses into place. And you've got your filter right here. Uh, this is a HEPA filter. Does a really good job of keeping the air clean that's, that's uh, being put out by this. And to clean it out, the easiest way I found is just bang it on a table. And as you just saw, there's no automatic filter clean on this. You've got to do it manually. Uh, I think there's still a way for you to comply with OSHA silica dust by stopping every so often and manually tapping on this filter. Um, just keep that in mind if that's the application you're looking on using this for. I really, really like the hose that comes with it. It's got a really clever uh, swiveling pivot guide here to keep it from getting kinked and worn uh, when you're going to be moving around with it. Uh, so this is a really great design. It actually unclips right here. It's got a positive lock that latches in place, as is uh, this locks onto any attachments you have on it as well. This is two feet in length when it's retracted and six feet if you really, really pull on it.
Now, it's a nice hose material, uh, pliable. It's not one of those cheap uh, plasticky hoses. It's got a little bit of a rubbery feel. Another thing is it's got a little clip here and right here on the belt, it's got a spot to clip it into. So this isn't dangling around and flopping all over the place. If you wanna uh, you know, set this and be hands-free for a little bit. As for accessory storage, you've got your main wand right here. This pops off, it sets into place here and clips in here. Uh, and you can pull off the floor tool. Uh, there's not really a good place to store this other than at the top of this. This wand I really, really like. You just grab this uh, if you're gonna adjust it. So you're holding it back here at the nozzle and you just grab and pull and it locks into place and it won't go anywhere until you touch this collar again. This is possibly the coolest design ever for this. It's super intuitive, super easy to use and adjust. The floor nozzle is pretty straightforward. It's just got an opening right here and a rubber kind of squeegee thing at the back, even though this is just a dry vacuum only, it's not a wet vac. Uh, and then it's got a swivel right here and a rotate. You can get this just about anywhere. You can get this underneath things because you can kind of lay the whole thing on its side and slide it in. Uh, this is a well-designed uh, floor accessory for hard floors. I tried using this on low pile carpet uh, and it was, it, it was really designed so it would suction down to the carpet and it was very difficult to move over it. I'd like to see uh, Milwaukee come out with a spinning head uh, air powered carpet design. I don't know if that's possible because the CFM on this is 55. It's not super high and generally I think those designs take high CFMs but I'd like to see if they could do it. On the side over here, you've got more accessory storage. The crevice tool has two bungees that hook in at the top and the bottom. And then this is the power tool dust extractor adapter. Uh, it's just got a bungee at the top. And depending on which accessory you're using this with or which power tool you're using this with, you either use this adapter or just this one with it. This has a rubber kind of nozzle. And uh, this is the jigsaw adapter. I've used this with the jigsaw. It works pretty well. Um, the only thing is with, with this, six foot hose slash two foot hose. Um, it, you, you feel always feel a little bit of resistance with it when you're using it with a tool on the dust extractor. So you may want to get the nine foot hose that they sell separately with this uh, just for a little bit more maneuverability uh, and ease of use. For this hose, the interior is one and a half inches. The exterior is one and three quarters. And for this one, it's a 35 millimeter interior. All right, so this harness is pretty adjustable. It's nice and padded up here and on the waist. Uh, it's got adjustment points at the top. You can change this little Velcro strap so you can move this up or down. Uh, it's got adjustments here at the waist, at the bottom of the shoulders, and down here where it attaches. Uh, so it's, it's very, very adjustable. It's also got a chest compression strap right here uh, to keep the straps together. So I'll put it on. I mean, if you've worn a hiking backpack, it's pretty similar to that. And you want to make sure you've got your weight on your hips because it'll give you a lot more uh, comfort if you're running this for an extended period of time than if it's hanging off your shoulders. Now I'm a pretty small guy, I am 5'3", so this is cinched all the way down for me. If you're a bigger guy though, I think there's quite a bit of adjustability in here uh, for it to fit you too. Vacuum handles sawdust, small debris, even pet hair on hard surfaces very, very well. Uh, when you're going forward with that floor tool, it, it works the best because when you go backwards, that squeegee kind of pushes things out of the way uh, and you don't get them sucked up as well. So suck things up moving forward, come back on the same path moving backwards. Uh, the only problems I had with this was with big chips from like big uh, switchblade hole saws. Um, that are, are just really chipping off big pieces of wood. Those got stuck in the nozzle. And I think really to suck up those, you're gonna need something like a two and a quarter inch uh, hose or bigger. The battery installs down here at the bottom. I've got a 12 amp hour in it right now. It's got plenty of room. Uh, so if you get, uh, if eventually they get a bigger battery, you shouldn't have any problems fitting it in there. The one thing I don't like, this is so recessed, you can't really see the fuel gauge, uh, especially if you've got it on your back. It would have been nice if up here somewhere they put a fuel gauge like the M12 tools do, uh, so you don't have to bend way down and look at the bottom of this to see how much charge you have left. Right, suction on this does depend a little bit on battery, which batteries you're using. Obviously the 12 and the 9 amp hour are going to do the best as far as runtime, but they also give you the most power with this. I did a static water lift test. Uh, no, I was not sucking up the water, I was just pulling it up a column so I wasn't getting any water in the actual vacuum. 
don't do that or you could ruin your vacuum. Uh, but when I did my pressure test, uh, these two both got 74 inches of water lift. The specification is 76. Uh, so that's what they're basing it off of is these two batteries. And I probably had some losses from the adapter I was using, uh, which was mostly duct tape. Um, so the uh, six amp hour battery did 71 and a half inches of water lift. And the five amp hour battery did 69 inches of water lift. So you will get the most power out of these two. I was surprised the six amp hour didn't perform the same, uh, but I think they probably optimized it for runtime. Uh, so these two that, that have a lot more amp hour capacity in them, they have it suck harder uh, than with this one because it'll run down this battery faster since it's only six amp hours versus nine or 12. Interestingly enough, uh, if you leave it on full static suction for a while, all of these batteries will drop down to 55 inches of water lift, which is uh, what it runs on at low anyway. Uh, and I believe that's to save battery life uh, and keep the motor from being overworked. The full weight of this with all the accessories and a nine amp hour battery is 20.4 pounds. Um, so it's, it's getting up there, but it's pretty comfortable to wear for extended periods of time. I, I wore this for 25 minutes in a row, doing the runtime test, vacuuming, uh, getting down on my hands and knees and vacuuming under stuff too. Uh, and this was fine. Uh, it didn't really tire me out, didn't really feel any fatigue uh, during that whole time. The stated runtime for this on a nine amp hour battery is 25 minutes on high and 40 plus minutes on low. I did my own runtime test and I used a combination of the floor tool and the crevice nozzle and uh, switch back and forth between high and low. I was probably in high 90% of the time and low about 10% of the time. And I got exactly 25 minutes on a nine amp hour battery. So pretty close to Milwaukee's stated run times. And it is gonna vary a little bit depending on what attachments you're using uh, and the nozzle you have on here, because depending on whether or not you're blocking up the airflow, uh, the motor's gonna be working harder and will use more battery faster. Price point on this is $300 bare tool or $450 if you buy it with a nine amp hour battery kit with a rapid charger. Uh, I think it's a decent price uh, for what you're getting. Uh, if you look at other cordless backpack vacuums, uh, the only other company I know that makes one is Makita. And theirs is actually a little bit more expensive than this one, has about the same CFM, but it has, uh, this has two and a half to three times more suction power uh, in water lift than the Makita does. Uh, this is quite a bit bigger though. Uh, if you look at other cordless backpack vacuums, you're actually looking at um, ones that are up in the thousand to $1,500 range uh, for professional cleaning teams. Um, so this is kind of in a class by itself and I think it's priced accordingly. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. And once again, don't forget to subscribe.